Pride Month has historically been about empowering the LGBTQIA community and freeing them from oppression. But Sky News All-Stars Rita Panahi, Piers Morgan and Douglas Murray argue that Pride Month is no longer about tolerance and acceptance, but about pushing a minority lifestyle onto the majority, with potentially disastrous consequences. You're taking the wrong flag down, mate. Yeah, well, you think I don't know that? At least you know that. 100%. That is Pride Month and rainbow and trans flags are everywhere. Many are asking, is this really an oppressed movement? much oppression happening there. I mean, you know, you've got every corporate kosher, every uh, government agency, celebrities, sporting bodies, everybody's coming out pledging allegiance. I mean, really, is this uh, a movement that is faced with oppression, crippling oppression, that it needs a Pride Month? Wouldn't seem that way. Uh, and I think there's two months. There's Pride Month and then there's something else in October that comes Oh, there's so, so it... many other days as well. I went through this like about a week or two ago because there's so many separate days. There's a, da a day for pronouns. There's a day for, what's it called, Ida Hobbit, International Day Against right. uh, Homophobia, Transphobia, Biphobia. There's just a, a bunch of days. But Pride is, is a month where we just see saturation coverage mm -hmm. almost and of, it's of this issue. It's expanding, so it's not. I think what's happening is there's a conflation of acceptance and inclusion, which most people are good people. And I think, mm. you know, regardless of sexual orientation or whatever else it may be, people don't, for the most part, um, are not prejudiced anymore. Mm. But it's being conflated with having it filter down into curriculum, into onto stages yes. that children are attending, you know, putting it out in the open. That's the issue I think where contention is. And it's sort of getting wrapped up and saying that you're just against the people, which most people are not. Absolutely. Pride Month has been around for decades, but Sky News host Rita Panahi argues that the once innocent street party has now become increasingly politicized with the goal of changing the very fabric of society. It's definitely been a shift where this is no longer about acceptance and equality. It's become a political movement and that's how people see it. They see the pride, uh, sorry, they see the rainbow or the trans flag as a, as a political symbol. And that's where the objection comes in. It's not against people's lifestyles. It's against being compelled to, um, you know, declare your pronouns or you're, you're a bigot. Sky News host Piers Morgan and contributor Tommy Laren agree, saying the Pride agenda has been forced onto us and we've had enough. Now listen, Pride Month is not a new thing. They've been celebrating Pride Month for many, many years and most American conservatives had no issue with it until it became forceful until it became the need for acknowledgement, the need for forced celebration, the need for forced validation. That's when you lost people. And then we took LGB and then we added LGBTQIA plus plus plus. And then we included men who dress up like women and mock women like influencer Dylan Mulvaney. And then a lot of American conservatives just said, listen, we've had enough. It's okay if you're proud of your sexuality, but why do I have to be proud of your sexuality? That's where you lost a lot of folks and we're starting All right. to finally well, first stand up say, and say, okay, trans woman, Dylan is a woman, so you got that wrong. And then Joe Biden made Pride Month political by inviting members of the queer community to a party at the White House. The gay flag was hung proudly in between the American flags, whilst gay, lesbian and trans people, as well as children and families, enjoyed the festivities on the grounds. Joe Biden has been very vocal about his support for the gay and trans community this year, drawing criticism from conservative commentators who accuse him of being a bandwagon supporter. There's so much absurdity in this. Firstly, I mean, goodness knows what's going through Joe Biden's head, but probably he's doing something like what he thinks of as being making up for lost time. Joe Biden was never very good on gay rights at all. He was never in favor of gay marriage, for instance, until everybody else was, and it was a fait accompli. 
perhaps he now thinks that he's sort of he can sort of cover that over and go heavy on the trans stuff which as i always say has nothing to do with being gay it's a totally different issue um and one that is deranging everyone i loathe this whole alphabet soup or as julie bindle describes it the unwa unbreakable wi-fi code that lgbtqia plus has become um <laughs> Uh, and and uh, there's so much that's appalling about this, but just to focus on two things. First of all, Joe Biden describes the attendees there as being some of the bravest people he's ever met. Mm. Joe Biden will have met an awful lot of veterans in his life. Yeah. He will have met an awful lot of policemen who've been shot in the line of duty, firemen and firefighters who've run into burning buildings. Sorry, but having um, a double mastectomy because you want to look like a man and uh, or, or getting fake breasts put on uh, is not uh, the bravest thing I've ever seen. I think it's totally deranged as it happens. Um, but as so that that's just flat out mad to say that the people there were the bravest people among the bravest people he'd ever met. But the, but the main thing is that, that what people like Biden don't seem to realize is that they are undoing pro, the progress that has been achieved in gay rights. The gay rights movement got success like other civil rights movements by saying we're just like everybody else. You know, it wasn't we're a totally different species of weird show-offs who want to flash our private parts at the White House, given a chance. You know, so, and, and it's been endlessly the case with the people who jumped onto this bandwagon last. They are making gay people look like freak shows. And that's because the people they keep highlighting are total freak shows. I, you know, I wish that they spent any time just recognizing that gay people in particular, just like everyone else, and if trans people want to be just like everyone else they can but one thing not to do is to be invited to the white house and get your jugs out and it's not only the white house that's exposing kids to inappropriate scenes rita panahi has slammed organizers of pride parades across america we're being told these are family friendly parades let's have a look at one that does not look family friendly to me Wowie, yes, uh, and it went on and on. Trust me, we haven't shown you the worst of it. Uh, Kosha reportedly kids in that crowd. I mean, really, it's 2023, we live in the West. Do we need to be celebrating anyone's sexual orientation anymore? I mean, it seems like it's almost pushing the envelope to a point where very reasonable live and let live people are gonna start objecting. Mm -hmm. It's that issue again that they're conflating acceptance and equality with sexualization and fetishization, even one could say, of all sorts of things on the spectrum of sexual behavior mm. out in the open, in the middle of the day where <laughs> potentially children are there. And that's, I think, what people are objecting to. It's being wrapped up again and being about a battle that's kind of won. They've won that. It's, it's not a thing anymore to be against. Well, we don't see the people. local strippers from Bar 20 parading down the street, you know, the sort of a, uh, celebrating their lifestyle choices. I don't know why we need to be doing this either. Take a look at a clip that went viral this week. Yes, uh, we're seeing all sorts of uh, antics with children uh, the, the, in the vicinity. I mean, this particular picture, again, has really caused uh, quite a bit of discussion online. There's a woman holding what looks like a toddler with a pretty much a naked man on all fours twerking in front of them and then another child walking past uh, and uh, I'll, I'll play some more footage of mums who've taken their kids along to performances where again very sexual in nature people in g-strings legs akimbo what is going on Alex what is 
the eagerness that some parents seem to have with exposing their kids to this sort of content. I think, I don't know, in some notion that they're being inclusive and tolerant. I really struggle to understand the mentality here. Well, you know, it's actually really dark. What, what happened was last Pride, last year, there was a big event that I went to. It was called Drag Your Kids to Pride. And they had a drag show with children. And on the wall, it said it's not going to lick itself. And this got national news. Yeah. And what it did was, read it, but it caused so much polarization that people on the left, now in order to get free publicity and to virtue signal and to, you know, I guess be a, you know, progressive icon, they're, ha they're having more drag shows for children. They're doing more drag queen story time events. So for me, I'm really worried because if you look at companies like Target, we expose them for having LGBTQ driven clothing for children when their own vice president of marketing got caught giving $2 million to an organization called GLSEN, whose main mission statement is to give kids transgender therapy without parental consent. So this is an attack on children. Of course, I'm not homophobic. I'm not transphobic. You know, every gay person, straight person, whoever wants to celebrate pride has the right to celebrate pride. But the sexualization of kids is not okay. And that's what it's become, Rita, in order to be extra edgy or in order to think that they're, you know, sticking it to the conservatives they're bringing their children to extra sexual events so this is not a political thing this is an over sexualization of children and it starts with the access to porn it starts with you know just the digital era that we live in now where kids can get on social media and share pictures it's a sexualization of kids problem it's not a you know gay straight problem in my opinion children's involvement isn't only limited to marches the Pride agenda is now well and truly entrenched in schools, as Rita Panahi reveals. Happy Pride, everyone. It's June 1st, the start of Pride Month. I pledge allegiance to the queers. The LGBTQ plus board I made it. Our school. This has been my first year in preschool with a class of my own teaching alongside another queer neurodivergent educator. We've been talking about gender and skin color and consent and empathy and our bodies and autonomy. It's been fabulous. fabulous. Well, you see, we keep hearing, oh, no, no, no one's indoctrinating the kids, but there seems to be a lot of indoctrinating happening right there. What does this all mean for the LGBTQIA plus community? Sky News contributor Douglas Murray says forcing a lifestyle on people will backfire as it creates resentment within the silent majority. It's just too much. You know, it's too much to see every corporation changing its its logos to a rainbow. It's too much to see the American armed forces that in recent memory didn't allow gays to serve in the military now going all rainbow colored. You know, I, I, it's just too much. I, I think it's, it's not going to improve people's views of gay people. It actually is going to worsen them because there's going to be such building resentment at just the overdoing of it all. But is it a bit too much? In other words, it, do you want to... What does that the, mean? What is too much? In other words, I think with every campaign, bringing people with you is really important, right? The moment it looks like it's just over the top, like it's everywhere you go, it's pride, 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 pride. Do we need to be that what, are, you are, you are you blaming gay people for that? I mean, no. it's awful that companies... I don't, honestly, I don't care what sexuality anybody is. I don't think most people do anymore. Right, so what is the problem then? Why are you so triggered Here's a, by a flag? I'll tell it's you a what rainbow problem. flag. I'll you tell you, I'm not triggered by a rainbow flag. I'm triggered by the fact that everywhere I go for a gallon a month, everything has to be a rainbow flag. And well, I'm triggered that everywhere I go for the entire year, everything has to be straight. Where is, why is straight Where's everywhere? my straight flag? Why